you come first of all to a fire. That's the first thing you see. And the first thing you run into is right down here. And the Lord's up here. And this direction here is west. And this direction here is east. And this direction over here is north. And this direction over here is south. And isn't that something? I mean, isn't that something? When God puts up that where you're reading, when you began to read there in Exodus, you know what you began to read? You began to read there, what chapter was that thing? That was chapter uh, 25, verse 8 and 9. Go back there and look at the first thing he told them to make for this tabernacle. Back there. Look at the first thing he told them to make. He told them to make this thing right here. And this is an altar. And it's a five by five death. And it's brass. It's made for judgment. And when God starts to give them the, the measurements for this tabernacle he's going to make, the first thing he tells them to make is the Ark of the Covenant. And what about, it should be about verse, uh, verse what, 10, 11, 12? All right. That's the Ark of Covenant. And that's up in here. That's this. So when he starts telling you how to, how to find him, he says, make this be because it, what I'm going to give is going to come from me. And it's going to come down to you this way. So if you want to get where God is, that's the way you've got to go. There's not any other way. And the first thing you ought to deal with is your sins. The burning. What are they burning? Well, they're burning lambs. One lamb in the morning, one lamb at night. They're burning on this altar. Day and night, night and day. No rest on the Sabbath. Burning morning and burning night. And they're burning here on a brazen, on a brazen altar. And this altar has a grill inside it. It's fixed up like this, and I can't throw the grill. But inside, there's a grill hanging down right here where the meat is cooked. It's like a barbecue. And it sits up like this, and this thing is burning day and night, and it doesn't, the fire on this thing is, is, goes forever. That's where they get the eternal fire from. And when um, JFK got blown away, they put up an eternal flame on his grave, and somebody blew the thing out the first, <laughs> 24 hours after they put it there. I guess they had to get something a little bit different. But when you come there, the first thing you run into is this. And what is this? This is paying for the, it's the penalty of sin. The way the sin is death. So the first thing you run into is something shows you that if you don't get uh, fixed up, you're going to burn in hell. You don't begin with John 3.16. You begin with our God is a consuming fire. Then you talk about him doing what he did to save you. But first you've got to see what you get saved from or ain't no point in him saving you. God saw the Lord, he gave his only begotten son, who slept him, believed him, he should not perish. How? Right there. You're going to burn. You say, what, like a lamb? Here's, a, here's a Abraham's boy going up the hill. Isaac, father, here's the fire, and here's the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And the old man says, God will provide himself a lamb. <clears throat> That's been changed in all the new Bibles. They don't want you to see that. That has two meanings. It's God himself will get the lamb, and God himself will be the lamb. All right, now there's, you get that, you get what you're getting into, you're getting into a fire here. And you're getting a fire here that burns night and day, and, day. and what does it pictures? It pictures God's judgment on sin. That's what it pictures. What does that mean? That means before you get where you're going, you're going to have to deal with sin. Until you've dealt with sin, you haven't dealt with the problem. That's what the thing is. If the first one is not God so loved the world, the first thing is our God is a consuming fire, and he that believeth not shall not see light, but the wrath of God abides upon him. What's your how, how are you going to get away with it? A lamb. A lamb. Behold the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The thing is, uh, uh, what you, something has got to get rid of your sins. Well, you take a fire at home, light a fire, and... Pretty soon you get a little blue flame right down there in the middle, and I'll guarantee you there ain't a bug down there. That's perfect sterilization. So when it gets blue, there'll be a little blue flame back in there, and I'll guarantee you a germ can't live there. 
God's got a place where all sin winds up and it ain't going to bother anybody anymore. But make sure you don't go there. That's what that thing is. Now, they had a World Council of Religions one time, oh, about oh, 30 years ago, maybe 50, oh, about 50 years ago. And all the big ways got together in the Congress and decided to get all the, the uh, uh, religions together. And they had all them present there from every religion. And they got up and talked about this and talked about that and couldn't reach any conclusion. And finally, a layman there, not a preacher, but a layman there, got up before that crowd of about 100 preachers and about 1,000 people and said, How cleansest thou this red right hand? <laughs> That's a quotation from Macbeth, where a fellow killed a fellow. And his conscience is bothering him, and he's out there at night, and his conscience is killing him for having killed the fellow, and people are trying to make him feel good. And he says to one of them, How cleansest thou this red right hand? I've just killed a fellow. I've got the blood on my hands. Tell me how to get it clean. Right there. You clean it or somebody else cleans it for you. No religion could answer him. They couldn't tell him how to get rid of it. Some of them said, well, ask God forgiveness. On what grounds? Take away the sin. How could you take away the sin? The wage of sin is death. Something's got to be done. Well, it's right there. And that's, that, that's judgment against sin. That is the penalty. The penalty of sin is death, and it's an eternal, an eternal flame. It's burning and burning and burning and burning and burning and burning. And all the way. I have all kind of uh, funny things to say about it. Uh, the, the scholars, they say it's a uh, uh, failure to change or, fail, or, 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 or failure to grow or uh, failure to be honest to oneself. They've got all kinds of ways to cover up their own sins with their own idea of what the thing is. But the truth is, quote, all unrighteousness is sin. Or right, you come in here and this thing comes down like this, and you can't get there or there or there or there or there until you come there. <laughs> you've got to deal with sin. That's what you've got to deal with. Muhammad could never do it. He never found a way to stop sin. He never found a way to pay for sin. And he never counted the new birth. He said you couldn't be born again. And if there was a way to get rid of sin, he didn't know how to do it. He said you just ask God to forgive you and he'll forgive you. <laughs> that's what, uh, that's what they, in, the, in the Old Testament, they confess their sins. Balaam said, uh, I, I'll go back, I have sinned. And then God had to kill him. And three books in the New Testament says he's in outer darkness. Judas I have sinned. I have betrayed innocent blood. Well, go to hell where you belong. After what? After you confess your sins. You have to have a payment for your sins. Not just confess them. I have, you, you know what old uh, Isaiah says? I'm an unclean man and dwell in the midst of an unclean people. So he confesses. But he accepts what God gives him. Simon Peter says, depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Confess his sins. But he has to get right. A little bit later, he sins again. When he does, he loses, uh, he loses his uh, apostleship. And when the Lord rises from the dead, he said, "Go tell my, my go tell my the, the apostles and Peter, and Peter lost his apostleship from what he sinned. Just confessing it doesn't do with it. You've got to get it done away with." Now, John the Baptist says, "Behold the Lamb of God." that taketh away the sin of the world. That's what you're doing. Why? He's the lamb. And that thing is a picture of his crucifixion. It's five by five. That's death. Jesus. That's five letters. That's five of them. Jesus dies on the cross. His five bleeding wounds he bears. It's a picture of death. It isn't a picture of grace. It's only a picture of grace in Christ's case. The other case, two lambs a day for over... 70 years, it has to do with sin. It has to do with that. It has to do with, with the sinner dying and getting punished. That's the penalty.